My name is Steve Ferrucci. I, I work at a, at a VA hospital out here, and I have the, the Aiden by Center view. Um, and right now I'm in my, my office in Porter Ranch, California. And um, I'm going to chat with uh, my friend John Warren, who's at his office, his home office in Wisconsin. And he's going to talk about how he uses uh, the technology in his practice. So, John, if I'm correct, you have the newest uh, unit that, that Centerview has, the DRS Plus. Is that correct? We, uh, we started using it, I want to say, late January. The box showed up. And it was kind of interesting. I actually timed it. It took us 13 minutes from op cutting the box open to taking mm -hmm. the first image to set this thing up. Uh, including putting it on the wired network. And um, because we'd been using the Compass before, uh, which is also a Centerview product, we're somewhat uh, used to the workflow and, and how to figure out how to put a patient in and do things. So it's pretty easy to do that. And uh, we actually, we were gonna have some training before all of this, this happened, but we were actually self-trained on the device. So what we did with it is we just started imaging every patient that came in the office that wasn't coming in to pick up glasses or have an adjustment. If they were being, gonna be seeing me we imaged them all because we wanted to see, you know, who could we and who could we not get good, good non-midriatic images on. And in my practice, I've got a, a, a in a private practice setting, but 80% of my patients are over 40 and 60% are over 60. So it's a lot of older sick eyes. And I've, I've taken over a refractive surgeon's practice. So I have tons of post lace post RK, post ALK. You probably remember some of those days. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, post, um, RK patients. So we're looking through all kinds of corneas, lots of older patients. Um, we were shocked um, with our ability to image patients, patients non mid with this with this device. Uh, I've got a TopCon Maestro that I use as my OCT, and I've been doing fundus imaging with it also. And we've actually stopped running the fundus image portion on the Maestro for the most part. We use it a ton as an OCT. It's a great OCT. Um, but it's actually changed the way that we uh, uh, image, you know, do the fundus imaging on those patients. So that's kind of how we got going with the, uh, um, with the, the DRS plus, but it's, it's been a really neat uh, addition to the practice uh, for imaging patients. So in, in my practice, I've got the DRS plus the compass, which does fields and does confocal imaging of the fundus optic nerve and, and the posterior pole. Um, and then I've got a Daytona plus and I've got the maestro. So I've got lots of different ways to image patients um, and capture stuff. So I've actually gotten to the point where it's, it's not that common for me to actually look in the eye myself unless the patient doesn't opt for uh, uh, the, the opto map. In that case, then we dilate the patient and do a traditional peripheral retinal exam. So it's actually in a significant way changed the way I practice because of the, the quality of the fundus images. Um, John, can you talk a little bit about, uh, I think you did a little bit about how, um, the, the, how easy it is to use it in your practice. Um, you talked about it a little bit. Yeah, you know, we found that less than 1% one per, one of the patients couldn't be imaged with it. Um, you know, these are patients that were old enough to understand the understand directions and, and that sort of thing. You know, there's some patients you just can't use certain tools on because of the cognitive issues or age. Uh, a couple of uh, very old patients that had neck, neck issues, they just couldn't get positioned at the device. But we're able to pretty much image everyone, at least the central fundus, so about a 40 degree image on just about every patient. Um, you know, if, if we can't get an image on them, we're pro I'm probably not even going to see through a dilated pupil, see much <laughs> in the back of the eye. Um, why don't you let me, I'll, actually, why don't I show you a, an example of this? Um, this was actually a patient, a 60-year-old guy who presented uh, for a routine exam. This is an example of, of a non-midriatic photo with uh, the center view, pretty much a, an average typical image that we get. And this is a patient that did opt in to having uh, the optomap done on them. So, but when you take a look at this, everything looks pretty normal in the posterior pole, maybe some slight vessel tortuosity, but nothing that really jumps out. But when we put him on the, uh, the optomap, you can see right down here, we've got a small hemorrhage, a little, a little blot hemorrhage that on, on the surface of the hemorrhage doesn't concern me too much about the ocular health, but the, his systemic health. So, um, so we then brought him back to the DRS plus and we ran a montage on him so we could actually get a high resolution image of that, of that hemorrhage so I can follow it over time. So it was an example of the, the two imaging technologies actually playing together very well um, with the, uh, the OptoMap finding something and then the uh, DRS Plus being used to actually follow it in imaging too. Um, one of the other things this does is it actually does anterior segment imaging too um, without any additional um, 
add-ons as far as you know dropping a, an extender on to increase the working distance or anything. You basically pick what, what image you want to take, whether it's any one of the internals or the external, and the camera adjusts itself, locks onto the eye and takes the image. This is actually a hyphema in a patient. Um, you can just kind of see the, the layering of the hyphema here uh, on the, uh, the image. But it's actually a pretty darn good anterior segment image that you get. So, um, you know, it, it, the, the device, you basically set the patient down and you can see if their eyes in, base, in pretty much the right position, you hit start and go from there. Um, yeah, those are great images, yeah, especially I mean, the anterior seg. I'm very impressed with that anterior seg picture. Yeah, I, you know, I talked about the um, uh, not using the maestro anymore. This is a patient. This is the same eye, same day, same pupil. Um, this is the, the image that we got with the, uh, the DRS Plus. And this is the image that we got on the maestro same day. Those are the exact same patient, um, pupil, same pupil size. You know, he wasn't dilated for one, not for the other, but it's just stunning the images that you get with this thing. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty interesting to see, see what you can do with this device to uh, capture images on patients. We actually know every patient that comes in for an anterior segment eval, a posterior segment eval, or a complete exam, um, we're imaging them in, you know, before I see the patient. Um, I've actually changed my flow around a little bit. We image these patients and then my staff does acuities and then I go talk to the patient, do a, kind of refine the history a bit, do the slit lamp exam and then move on with the rest of the exam with my staff. And we found even with most patients, unless their contacts are drying on the eye, we get great images right through contact lenses, soft lenses, gas perms, really not bothered by this. So um, really, it's been interesting. I mean, I, I think in your setting, it might be interesting to see you know, see these kind of images on, on the 72 year old that comes in for a cataract follow up um, to be able to, to rule in or rule out any pathology in the posterior pole before you have to worry about what else is going on. Yes, yeah, so, no, that's a good point. Use the Aiden, right? And that's a, that's a technology yeah. I've seen at trade shows but haven't used myself. How, how do you utilize that clinically? In my practice, I have the uh, Aiden, um, and my practice flow is probably a little bit different than many people's in private practice. Um, in that I still, I dilate a, a huge majority of my patients. Um, and it's interesting, you know, one, one thing I, I think that you said was interesting is that, you know, you, you really don't look in, in the back of the eye anymore. And um, I would say I probably still do look in the eye. I think there is some value there. But, you know, if you asked me a couple of years ago, I would have said, well, the cameras are just good for documenting what you see. But, but now, especially with the Aiden and what I've seen with the DRS Plus, because of the, the great resolution, um, I think it's a great adjunct to your, your clinical exam. And very often I would argue that I do see things on the photo that I don't see on clinical exam. Isn't it crazy um, the ERMs that you see? Oh, it really is. Or yeah. even just, you know, subtle changes in the diabetic, some ERMAs, you know, and I encourage my residents to take pictures as often as in a perfect world, I take picture in all diabetic, but uh, diabetics, but unfortunately sometimes we get a little too busy and we just can't do it. But I encourage them to take pictures and, and look at the picture because you, know, you have a patient, they've got a little bit of a cataract, like you said, or you know, they're not holding still and you want to look. And sometimes it's very hard to get a good fundus exam to see are there ermas, are there hemorrhages, and what, what have you. But now you're taking a nice high quality still photo. And if you look at that photo, you know, sometimes I'll see stuff in that photo that I, I missed on clinical exam. So what I sometimes like to do, it doesn't always work, but in a perfect world, what I would do is, is kind of what you said, take a photo, uh, look at the photo before you look at the patient, kind of look at it and say, okay, you know, huh, there's something in, in this area I want to have better look at on clinical exam. What's this over here? And then really look at that patient so you can see what is going on. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of how I use it. I use it more as an adjunct to my, um, to my retinal exam, not uh, you know, only, uh, you know, not, not to surpass it, but to, to kind of adjunct it. But I, but I understand your point completely. Um, you know, a retinal specialist that I used to work with once told me you know, about is just the ability to see more of things at the same time, you know, oh, sure. the field of view you've got with a 90 or a, or a digital wide field or whatever it may be, you know, seeing everything in relation to, to other structures. Yeah, no, I, I agree a hundred percent. And let me, uh, and you know, ease of use, you know, you, you, you went through that. I mean, you know, it's so easy to use and, and those people who aren't familiar with it, 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 you know, auto focuses it, it auto places itself. So really the amount of time that the technician has to spend there is, is relatively uh, limited, quite frankly. 
um, and it's great. And, and we dilate the majority of our patients, um, but as you mentioned, you know, even with a relatively small pupil, you can still get very, very good images. Yep. Yeah, I'm curious to see the kind of not not so much how the images compare as far as clarity, but the the montages and things. Yeah. So, um, so you know, one one thing that that you know is becoming increasingly uh, evident is that when I was in school, and, and John and I are about about the same age. I'm I'm a little better looking, but we're about the same age. But um, when I was in school, they said, you know, diabetes, it's really in the posterior pole. And a lot of the newer evidence is showing that, that you really have to look in the periphery now. So things like this that, that help us look better in the periphery and document what we're seeing in the periphery, I think are really important uh, moving forward. And some of the newer studies are saying we miss about 30% of hemorrhages, 27% of ermas, and 34% of NVE outside of the standard ETRS fields, which a lot of standard cameras don't even go out that far. So if we're not looking in the periphery, we're really gonna start miscalculating the level of diabetic retinopathy in diabetic patients. And I have a very large uh, diabetic practice at the VA. So that, to me, that's you know, very, very uh, important. And this is just an example you know, of a kind of a montage patient, a patient with moderate to severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy with the aid in, you know, in the montage. And you can see what good quality we have um, and over sort of to the, the left of the optic nerve, you can see in a little bit uh, area of probably Irma. And then this is that same patient taken with a traditional retinal camera. So you can see how much more you can see and how much better you can evaluate the level of retinopathy. Same thing here. Again, this is a patient with the, with the aid in on the montage. And, and here it is with just a standard retinal camera. I'm um, guessing that's about a 2030 cataract or worse you're looking through with the aid. Uh, probably, probably. No. Yeah, I've got some, I, I've got you an image in a second. I'll show you something that's kind of interesting. But here's another patient with mild NPDR. And this is just kind of three, uh, three photos put together in a montage. And again, you know, rather than just getting the central field, you get a much, much improved and wide view here. Uh, another patient with mild and again, we can see all these peripheral hemorrhages that if we were just looking in the posterior pole, we would probably miss on this patient and miscalculate them. Here's an example of a patient with moderate to severe uh, non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And you know, here you can see a lot of hemorrhages you know, in all four quadrants. And you know, we can remember the 421 rule back from our, our days in school to help uh, remind us uh, you know, the importance of looking for these things in our diabetic patients. Here's another patient with a lot of hemorrhages in all four quadrants. And again, you can just look at the quality and, and how you can see these, these ermas and these you know, mild changes that maybe you can't see on clinical exam. And here's a patient with severe NPDR, maybe PDR, because this looks certainly like some area of neovascularization here um, that, that is of concern. Again, another patient with severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And you can see some, some venous beating here as well as hemorrhages in all four quadrants. And, um, you know, it really helps us take better care of our patients because based on some of the newer information out there, it's important to start thinking about treating these patients a little bit sooner when they get to level of severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy than waiting, uh, you know, longer. So I think it's really important. Here's an example of a patient with, with uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy in the left eye. And there you can see a nice example of some neovascularization. Whoops, a nice example up there of some neovascularization. So really, you know, beautiful images. And again, you know, perhaps if the patient has some cataract, they're, they're not the most cooperative patient. You know, you could imagine you could miss that tuft of neovascularization, but, but when you look at the picture and you can sit there and examine it for a couple minutes without the patient, you know, it's, it's, it's much more evident uh, in this case. And this is an example of a patient who's had a lot of PRP and you can see they have a lot of scars. You know, macular degeneration, I, I love to take it to, to help, you know, monitor these patients along with an OCT to look for drusen and changes. And here's an example of a, a stage two, here's a little stage three, a little worsening. And here's a patient with an atrophic scar. And here's a patient with, a, with wet AMD with an obvious hemorrhage. So but the images are, are high quality, you know, really, really good to help you monitor the patients. You were talking about uh, media opacities. And what I found was, you know, I do have an older population, a lot of cataracts and corneal issues. And the Aiden, because it doesn't use uh, only traditional white light, it also uses a scanning 
laser ophthalmoscope that you can really penetrate these uh, these medial passages to get much better uh, images. And on the uh, left hand side, this is from the traditional camera, and you can see not a great image. And with the aid in, you can see how much better that image is, and you can really see what's going on with that patient. And same patient here is his left eye. And again, you can see how much clearer the image is with the aid in uh, versus the traditional camera. And there's an example of a patient, you don't run into this all the time, but a patient with asteroid. And again, you can see with the traditional camera, you really can't get a good view at all of the, uh, of the fundus, but with the aid in, it's able to penetrate that opacity and you can really get a, a pretty usable image. So certainly in these patients with, with, with uh, cataracts or what have you, it, it's very, very helpful. Yeah, the DRS uh, plus is the same way with the uh, uh, asteroid and, and the significant floaters that you just can't see around or through. It's amazing how it's not bothered by those issues. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And it's been, you know, and sometimes it's the only view you're going to get sometimes. So it's really, really important. I just want to uh, just close real quick, just show you some, a couple examples of some pathology that, that I see. And, you know, th this, this is you know, more of some pathology, not so much for screening, but to document some pathology. But nice, you know, BRVO here. This is kind of in the, in the one-shot center field. And then this is kind of in a wider field. And this, this is uh, in the whole... Um, you know, kind of mosaic. So again, you, you get a really good feel for what's going on in the retina. Here's another patient with a BRVO, a couple different ways, uh, a couple CRVOs. And again, you, you really get a nice feel for uh, what's going on in the retina. Uh, Holland horse plaques, we see a fair amount of those in our patients. And you can see a couple examples of those. Uh, unfortunately, a patient with retinitis pigmentosa, uh, nice example there. Uh, a patient that I saw a bilateral choroidal metastasis. Uh, this story did not end well, unfortunately. But again, you know, you can really get a, a beautiful view of the retina here. And then uh, is an example of a patient I saw with a in the left eye with a two retina schesis. You can see one superior, one inferior, and uh, there they are on close up. And the interesting thing about this patient, I saw the, the retinoschisis in the left eye. I thought his right eye was fine, but when I actually took the aid in of the right eye, I think you can appreciate up in the superior temporal area, there, there's actually a little retinoschisis there as well. So again, you know, I used to think that, that these cam, oh, here's another schesis as well. And we're able to show over time, over six months, you know, side by side, first visit to six months follow-up, that this patient's stable. So it really gives you, um, you know, makes you feel a lot better that you're, you're taking good care of this patient. So like I said, I used to think that the cameras were only good for um, sort of, uh, you know, documenting what we see, but really with, with the quality being as good as it is, you know, I, I really think it, it adds to, or in some cases, as you mentioned, John, might take place of our clinical exam. So, um, and let, let me, I'm going to kick this pick over to you, John. What I'd like you to do, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the compass? I, I think probably a lot of, uh, you know, I'm not all that familiar with it. And some of our people might Absolutely. be watching, might not be. What, are, well. what are you using for fields? Uh, unfortunately, a Humphrey. 